what one of the key elements is making sure that whatever you're designing, the end state, can be built. Right? And this is the, the power of prototyping. So ironically, we all made paper airplanes today. This slide was not intentional. Matt, this is actually a cardboard airplane. But um, prototyping. Prototyping is the key to a lean UX process. It's getting your ideas out in front of people and letting them click through the experience or walk through the experience. And you can prototype a paper, and you can prototype a PowerPoint, and you can prototype with fireworks, and you can prototype with Visio and OmniGraph, or whatever tool you work in, you can prototype. Prototyping shines. And here's the kicker. You don't have to prototype the entire experience. You prototype the core flow, the core piece of the experience that people need to get to. Is it a shopping cart? Is it a purchase flow? Whatever it is, get the prototype out there and get people clicking on it internally, <coughs> externally, and make sure that it's the right approach. Once the prototype is built and you've iterated on that, you can validate that that's the right approach, that's the right flow. You show the prototype to your team, your developers. Your developers then say, hey, I can build that, or no, I can't build that, or you know what, if we did this, uh, we could actually build it a little bit better. There's some other alternatives here. Uh, you explain the flows, you walk your developers through it, you explain your design decisions and the customer feedback and the stakeholder feedback that you've gotten. And what happens is that the prototype itself becomes the documentation. You don't have to create any further documentation. <laughs> right? If you want to know what happens when you click a button, click the button. See what happens. If you want to know what, what the next screen is after this one, go to the next screen. <coughs> So that, that prototype can actually become a documentation for your QA folks, uh, for your developers. At the end, if one has an actual product, they can hold up the product and the prototype and compare. When, you know, when I do this in here, does it match up with the prototype? Yes, it does. Great. Check it off. It looks good. There's no additional deliverable required. There's no spec at the end here. There's simply the prototype in whatever format you created it that describes the experience good enough. It doesn't have to describe it perfectly. It's good enough for your developers you make those understand what you're doing. Here's the other benefit of prototype, showing it to your customers. So usability testing, and the key, again, part of the Lean UX process uh, that we use at the ladders uh, is to keep it light and keep it cheap. We, uh, so I'll give you a direct case study from what we do. We bring people in every Friday. Every Friday, we have three users in some, uh, So we do job seekers and recruiters. Those are our customers. Sometimes they're job seekers. Sometimes they're recruiters. Every Friday, three, three people come in, and we show them whatever we have ready. If it's a napkin sketch, they look at a napkin sketch. If it's a prototype, great. Working code, uh, mock-ups, wh whatever we have ready to show them, we show them and we get feedback. Now, I know, uh, I know uh, uh, Jacob Nielsen says you've got to bring in five people, and the ROI drops off after five people. Uh, five people take me, take me a whole day, and I don't have all the resources to run usability studies and eat someone's day up an entire day for, for user research. So three people, I can get it done in a half day, in a morning, basically. Uh, and within three people, you, should, you really start to see the boulders in the road of your experience. So by clicking through the prototype, they can see, hey, what are the giant obstacles? Can people even just get through the flow? Do they even know what's going on over here? Uh, and, and that's enough for us to iterate and then next week, show it to three more people. And this is, this is easy to do. If you think you don't have the budget for it, uh, I can tell you that our, our lab at the ladders consists of a standard Windows machine. It runs More, so More is like 1500 bucks. But if you've got a Mac, you can run Silverback, which I think costs 50 bucks. Um, and then we stream, we live stream More into a conference room. And people uh, will opt in to go sit in that conference room and watch test participants. Or you can sit at your desk and have Moray Observer installed on your desktop and view at your desk while this is going on. And what we've done by testing every week three people, we've built a culture of, of user research. And so now we get developers and product managers and stakeholders mm -hmm. into those sessions viewing and seeing the customers use the products and the prototypes firsthand. And that's what helped us tremendously when we then go back out and we said, hey, the next iteration of this takes the feedback from that uh, user research that we did on Friday that you sat through, and then you can show the progress. <coughs> and really, there, again, there's really no deliverable here. At, at, at most, we publish a one to two page recap of what, what happened uh, for our archive for, for, for referencing it in the past. But most people are participating in the research because, again, it's a half day, and we get them to come and view it from a variety of cross functional cross functions across the scene. Okay. 
So uh, finally, what, what Lean UX helps you do, again, is fill in the gaps. What did you not think about? So you're saying to yourself, well, if I'm not prototyping the whole experience, I'm only prototyping the core experiences, what happens? The more you get out there and you talk about what you're building, you show it to your developers, you show it to stakeholders, the more you talk about it, the more you realize what you're missing in the experience. Hey, I forgot uh, what, uh, that error case. Or what happens if the user doesn't have these credentials? Oh yeah, let me, let me get that, let me fix that, let me do that for the next iteration, let me get that in there. The more you talk about it, the more you understand what's been overlooked. Again, as opposed to kind of going off for a significant period of time and then coming back and saying, okay, so I've, I've burned through my allotment of design time, of UX time, and, and here's what I got. And you're like, well, you forgot these three other uh, core flows. Uh, by getting it out there and getting that critique early, you start to figure out what you're actually forgetting in the process, what you're overlooking. And this saves you not only time, but it saves you money because the, the, the iterative process is significantly uh, 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 less costly up front. I think, uh, what was it? Uh, I, think it was, I think it was Frank Gehry said it. Um, I did Frank one, right? I guess it's mixed up. But uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, you know, give me an eraser. Uh, I can use an eraser on the draft board or a sledgehammer at the construction site, right? That's 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 the key here is that we're using uh, we're using erasers at the draft board early and often. So uh, that's kind of one, what Lean UX is, and you may be asking yourself, well, I work in this organization or this type of organization, uh, can it be done? And I think that uh, I think that it can, or I would be up here talking to you. And uh, I think there are two, two cultures to address here specifically. I think this is the, the internal corporate design UX shop, uh, usability shop within an organization. And I think there's the interactive agency, which this gentleman over here represents. <laughs> <laughs> stereotypical agency guy. <laughs> so really quickly, I think if you work at an internal company, if you work internal to a company, software or web design shop, you work at a bank, you work at uh, you know, at the ladders like I do. I think this is well, uh, well within your grasp. I think the transition to Lean UX should be relatively easy. Ultimately, you're delivering software to your customers faster. You're, you're, you're getting better results. You're aligning with your business needs better. Um, and, and the bottom line is this: if you work internally in a shop, you're in the problem-solving business. And you don't solve those problems with design documentation. Solve them with software. The deliverables don't solve the business problems. It's the end product that solves the business problems. So if you work within an age, within a within a shop, and you guys all know who this is, right? Yes. Gloria. No. Uh, this is the original Microsoft. In case for those of you who don't know, that's Bill Gates down there in the bottom. I don't know which one Paul Allen is, but it's the guy on the right. This guy is Paul Allen. Right. So, uh, so there you go. Uh, but if you work inside, if you work inside the uh, an organization, I think this is well within your grasp. If you can't convince your bosses to try it, go rogue, ask for forgiveness. Grab a developer, grab a product manager, say on this next thing, we're going to go lean. And we're going to try it, and we're going to see if that works for us. And then if it works, show it to another person as well. Again, you're solving business problems with software, not documentation. So uh, at the agency, I think at the agency it's a little, it's a little bit tougher. And there's a key reason why uh, it's a little bit of a tougher sell inside the interactive agency. And uh, it all boils down to this. <laughs> I see a lot of heads nodding. Um, uh, a friend of mine said this to me, uh, and it stuck with me. Uh, agencies are in the, in the deliverables business. That's what they get paid to do. They get paid to make documentation. Don't fool yourself. Uh, you know, at least that's, that's been my experience. And I saw a lot of heads nodding, so I don't think I'm alone there. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you a perfect anecdote. Uh, I worked in an agency uh, within the last five years. That won't be mentioned, uh, and, uh, except in my title slide. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, the, we had a client who paid us uh, $600,000 for a strategy document. And he worked on that document. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, now I forgot about that. Um, uh, they paid us grand for that strategy document. And we slaved away on that document. 600K, you better believe that when that document hit the table, you know, it made a thud. You know, for 600K, that thing had to be fixed. And so we spent hours and we put together the deck and it was beautiful and had personas and it had, you know, market research and competitive analyses. And it was, it was, it was awesome. I mean, it was pretty much it was as awesome as a document could get. We walked over to the client site 
and we spent a half a day in their conference room and we walked through it and we presented it and we showed it to everybody. And they, uh, and they loved it, and that was great. And so they got what they wanted. And do you think anybody ever went back and looked at that document? We didn't, right, for any further work. I doubt they did either. 600K, that's what the agencies are in, the agencies are in the deliverables business. So I think that there's a fundamental business model change that needs to happen in the interactive agency world to make this work. So really quick, I'll tell you what I think that, that change should be, and then we'll get into a case study about how we're making this work at the liner. So this, just, just to recap, this is the, what the quote unquote the internal process could look like if we work at a shop, this slide I showed at the beginning of the, uh, the presentation. Um, for agencies, I think it looks uh, slightly different. It looks like this. Um, and so you'll notice I use the same fantastic sketches. Um, and the idea, the, the main differentiation is that you get out and you show your client work quickly. So instead of showing to your boss and showing to your team, you say, hey client, every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. for 15 minutes, we're gonna get on the phone and I'm gonna show you what we have. And it's not gonna be pretty, and it's not gonna be finished, but I wanna make sure we're heading in the right direction. And then you get that feedback for 15 or 20 minutes and you incorporate it and you iterate. And then Thursday morning when you have the next call, you show them the progress. And as you build that over the length of the project, uh, you know what happens? Uh, they start to own it. Your client starts to own it. They see their fingerprints in the work. They start to feel like it's their project, like they're a part of it. And when they start to own it, they start to defend it. And that's when you win. Because when they defend it, when their boss comes down and says, ah, that's crap, change it, you're like, no, 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 we've worked on this together. And, uh, and this, is why we, this is why the changes and the design is this way. They have the background knowledge and they can defend it from the, uh, the seagull approach, the new term I've learned recently, you guys familiar? The seagull management, it's a swoop and poop. <laughs> uh, big boss will come in, drop a bomb and leave, uh, that kind of thing. So your client is, is now, uh, you guys haven't heard that term? It's pretty good. Uh, the idea is they now own it. And so you're iterating with your client they see the ownership and they're building this into it. And you've got your usability testing built in if they'll give you access to their customers. You're prototyping quickly, you're learning and evolving. Uh, a lot of pushback you'll see from agencies says, hey, fewer deliverables means fewer billable hours, which means I'm making less money. And I would push back and say that uh, your project is actually delivered faster, you have happier, more empowered clients, and therefore you have more repeat customers. The repeat customers is what it's all about. It's how you stay in business with referrals. I think finally, uh, very quickly, is that if you can invest in your client success, get paid for that time and material to create that uh, experience with them, with fewer deliverables, and then if you meet your business goals, so if your goal is to increase the conversion rate by 15%, uh, if you meet that goal, then you can get paid more because that's the experience that you're designing. You should be held accountable and get paid for the experience that you're designing, not the deliverables.